and welcome back to HGT STEM. Today we're going to be watching a video about Francian. So, without further ado, let's hop to it. Francium is the heaviest of the alkali metals, at least until element 119 is synthesized. It also has the biggest atom of any element in the whole periodic table. Now, some of you may have seen on YouTube, there are videos that pretend to be huge explosions of francium. And I'm never quite sure whether I should be really pleased about this, because it shows that people are using the periodic table in the right way and deducing that francium should be really very reactive, or whether I should be tearing out my hair because the videos are fake and they're chemically wrong. But most of all, they miss the really exciting part about Francium, which is the really moving story about Marguerite Perret, the woman who discovered Francium. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was obvious that there ought to be an element at the bottom of the alkali metals. And so lots of people were looking for it. The American professor Fred Allison in Alabama the one who thought he had discovered element 85 also thought that he discovered element 87. But it turned out that his method that he was using, which is quite complicated, so I won't explain it now, was fundamentally flawed. It was wrong, and he wasn't measuring anything except something psychological in his mind. <laughs> it was realized fairly early on that element 87 could be made from element 89, actinium, by emission of an alpha particle. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons, so if you take two away from 89, you get 87. And the problem was that actinium is quite a rare element and was very difficult to get hold of a sample. It had been discovered by André de Bian around about 1900, and he was working in the same institute as Marie Curie. And in 1929, a young woman, Marguerite Perret, went to the lab and started as a lab assistant with Marie Curie, and she was put to purifying actinium. You would begin with literally tons of impure ore, probably uranium, and then you would gradually boil it up, dissolve it, extract material until you ended up with just a few milligrams of the material you wanted. The other problem was that nobody realized how dangerous radioactivity was. So they were all working in the lab with very few precautions. The upshot of this was that Marguerite Perret became a real expert in handling actinium and separating it. Four years after she started, Madame Curie died. She started working simultaneously for André de Bian, the professor who had discovered actinium, and also Marie Curie's daughter, Irène Curie-Joliot. For some completely unknown reason, these two people didn't realize they were both directing the work of the same person. The aim was to get the purest possible sample of actinium and then measure the radioactivity coming from it. The way the actinium decays is entirely due to the physics of the nucleus. The reason for purifying it is to get rid of all the other radioactive impurities which might send out signals that would completely mask the effect you were looking for. So what Marguerite Perret observed was when she took a really pure solution of actinium and measured the radioactivity very rapidly. For the first two hours, the radioactivity of the solution increased, and then it came approximately constant. And so she deduced that what was happening was that the actinium was decaying to form a new element, which itself was decaying and giving out much stronger radiation. The reason you saw this build-up was because material went into solution, and you got to a stage where it was being formed at the same rate as at which it was decaying. She also discovered that this radioactivity could be precipitated by adding cesium salt 
and then precipitating the cesium salts as a perchlorate. Cesium and element 87 should have similar chemical properties so you expect them to precipitate together. Once it precipitated, you could show that the precipitate was radioactive rather than the solution. And the half-life was about 21 minutes. So you had to work really fast. The upshot was that she had discovered element 87. In 1939, she published her paper on element 87 derived from actinium. Now, there was a really exciting and interesting situation. Marguerite was a lab assistant. She had no chemical qualifications, apart from basic training, but she had enough material for a doctorate, possibly even for a big prize. But she couldn't submit this material for a doctorate because she didn't have a chemistry degree. What happened was that she was allowed to go and study during the Second World War to get the necessary certificates to allow her to submit her main discovery for a doctoral thesis. Now, the interesting thing about this paper is that there is only one author, Marguerite Perrin, and there's the name here of Jean Perrin, the person who actually submitted this paper to the journal on her behalf. What's interesting is neither of the two professors had their names on the papers. And apparently, after the discovery had been made, they discovered that Marguerite was, as it were, double-timing them and working with both of them, and neither of them could agree whose name should go on the paper. And eventually, they decided that she should publish just alone. It was probably a misunderstanding and perhaps a reflection of the way that lab assistants were treated and nobody actually asked her who she was working for. They were both ordering her about. Now, in 1946, when she submitted her thesis, she was asked what name she wanted for the element. And she suggested that she should call it catium, C-A-T-I-U-M, because she believed that being at the bottom of the periodic table, it would form cation, a positive ion, more easily than any other element. However, Madame Curie's daughter, who spoke English, said she thought it was a bad name because English speakers would think it was something to do with cats, the furry animals. Therefore, it wasn't appropriate for a name of an element. So instead, the second choice was Francium, named after France, originally with the symbol F-A, but then this was changed to FR. In fact, Seaborg wrote to Marguerite Perret to ask which was the correct symbol, and she answered FR. After her doctorate, she had quite an impressive career. She was made a professor of chemistry, and she was also elected as the first woman to the Académie des Sciences, the French Academy of Sciences, the first woman since the 17th century. So it was that's amazing. Very talented. She went from just being a lab assistant to finding an element to becoming a professor. Like, I think that's amazing. Extremely cool. Also, I think it should have been named Catium because cats are cool, and I don't see how that's an inappropriate name for an element. Cats are amazing. And if you disagree with me, then whatever. You're weird. It's really... It's fine if you don't like cats. I'm kidding. Quite a triumph. But sadly, because of her exposure to all these radioactive elements, as she got older, she developed chronic radiation sickness and problems. So... Towards the end of her life, when she was really keen to do more research into francium, her health deteriorated and she died quite young in 1975. But what's exciting is that research is continuing in francium. People now can synthesize francium in accelerators by the method of taking a light atom and a heavy one, 
In this case, the light atom is oxygen, atomic number 8, and gold, atomic number 79. 8 plus 79 makes 87. So, for example, there has been an interesting paper that was published in 2005 on the relative rates of extraction of francium and cesium from solution. And even if you have just a tiny amount of francium, because it's radioactive, you can follow the process very easily because modern radiation detectors can detect even a few atoms. I think from the point of view of periodic videos, the most interesting fact is that people have measured the ionization energy of francium. That's the energy required to remove one electron to make francium plus. This is the reaction that occurs when you put a metal in water. It shows just how reactive the iron is. Holy crap. <laughs> Go. Most surprisingly, the amount of energy to remove the electron from francium is slightly greater than required to remove it from cesium. So cesium is actually a bit more reactive than francium. The difference is not very great. In principle, this is quite surprising because you would think that the bigger the atom, the further the electron will be away and therefore the easier it is to remove it. And we've seen this in our videos when we've compared the reactivity of lithium, which is really small, with sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium as the atoms get bigger. The reason why francium doesn't behave as people expect is due to what are called relativistic effects. And we've talked about this in our video about mercury, is that as the atom gets bigger, the electrons are circulating faster and faster at speeds that are a fraction of the speed of light, which affects the mass of the electron and therefore makes the atom a bit smaller than one might expect. Therefore, the electron is a little closer to the nucleus and is bound a bit more strongly than it might be otherwise if there were not these effects. The atom is still much bigger than cesium, but it's not quite as big as you would expect. And we're talking about quite a small energy difference between cesium and um, francium, but it's real. So this brings me back to the fake videos. Francium would not react with water more violently than cesium. So you shouldn't be surprised that I want to tear my hair out. Perhaps it's understandable, even I was wrong on our, one of our videos, I said that the video of the century would be francium and water. It would be the damp squib of the century. No one will ever see francium reacting with water because there's so few atoms. And in fact, the world record for getting francium atoms in one place and one time is 300,000 atoms. That might sound a lot, but it is an unimaginably small speck of francium, and you wouldn't see anything if you dropped that into water. That's funny how he talked about how francium would not react in water. Like, those videos showed so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Let me know what your favorite fact about francium is down in the comments. Stay smart. I'll see you next time. Bye.